stored air is always in short supply. So the best solution is to have a straight line setting the most efficient way to ascend or descend without losing your bearings. Man was not the first to find this solution. A slimy safety line keeps these mollusks from getting lost in their green labyrinths. A straight line is the shortest path from food to air, and these snails must constantly ascend to the surface to breathe. that do not have problems with their oxygen supply are those animals that have evolved in ways faithful to their birthplaces. There's no doubt that fish have the most perfect fins, the most hydrodynamic shapes and skins, the least resistant movements to glide through water. They're the models we copied most often when designing ships or submarines, keels, stabilizers or rudders. In the sea, there are almost 20,000 species of fish, 20,000 ways to move through more than 20,000 leagues of underwater travels. Most of them have a common feature, a chamber that can inflate or deflate with gas to attain more or less pressure, to stabilize the fish at the desired depth with no ballast. The air bladder allows for inimitable tri-dimensional spatial control. And you don't have to flap your fins all the time. The only exceptions lacking this organ are the primitive cartilaginous fish. And they have to keep swimming continuously till the end of their days. Otherwise, they're not able to control the depth of their immersion. The most modern diving equipment includes a vest connected to the air tank that acts as a huge swimming bladder. Our technology allows us the feeling of being one among many fish. In the oceans, many other living beings move before our eyes almost unnamed. The variety and specialization needed in this disturbing world could supply us with an infinite number of movements to conquer it and to care for it. The octopus's amazing jet propulsion is just a sample of how each species has adapted their genetic design to the sea or to fresh water. But sailing the seas, or arriving at a new coast, is not always the exclusive responsibility of chromosomes. Sometimes fate plays a determining role in dispersing life forms. The coconut goes north or south according to chance, and it was never in a hurry. If it's the first to arrive on a lifeless beach, it's ready for it. It's a colonizer. Its white reserves can feed it until its roots find nourishment down there. Then it will wait until new waves of animals or plants come and settle nearby, thanks to the coconut's presence. And a coconut can also be a vessel for other little stowaways. Life manages very well to extend itself all over the planet in really surprising manners. And it is we, human beings, the most cosmopolitan of all beings, who will be the second wave. <laughs>